Welcome to Mulready Minutes with Oklahoma Insurance Commissioner Glenn Mulready. This is a podcast about insurance for insurance folks, risk managers, and business leaders. We'll dive deep and look at what is and isn't working, talk to leaders in the industry, and keep you informed on what's happening in Oklahoma and around the country. Okay, welcome back to another uh, Mulready Minutes podcast. Uh, we are pretty excited to have with us today some expertise in the PBM world. Uh, and if you don't know what that acronym is, uh, we'll get to that in a minute. But uh, meanwhile, let me introduce Kelly Price. She is uh, Director of Compliance for our PBM area at the Oklahoma Insurance Department. And first of all, Kelly, let's start with um, a little bit of your story, just personally, and, and give us a little bit of your, about your background. Okay. Uh, well, I just started at the Oklahoma Insurance Department March 1st, 2021. So Full six months under your belt. Yes, <laughs> yes. Long time. Um, no, I, I actually, I grew up in Alaska. Moved there when we, I was four. Uh, lived there for 21 years. And one of the things that we have we share in common, as I recall too, you have all boys. We have three sons, so ne- didn't have any girls, but we're yep. razors boys. of boys. Four boys. Why don't you tell us a little bit about, about the acronym PBM and what exactly are PBMs? Okay. Um, well, PBM stands for Pharmacy Benefits Managers or Management, uh, and basically. Pharmacy benefits managers are an entity that didn't really exist until about the late 90s in the United States. And they're, what they essentially are is our middleman between pharmacies when you go in to fill a prescription and the health insurance. And the reason really that they came into existence is because you would have all these individual pharmacies all over the place and you might have one big health insurance company, well, the PBMs would go to the, the various pharmacies and say, okay, we're going to contract with you pharmacies. And then when somebody from this health insurance company who has a policy through this health insurance company comes to fill their prescription, you'll be able to fill it. Basically the go-between between health plans and pharmacies. So yes. they're managing sort of the pricing pieces as well as the network pieces for health plans. And that health plan could be a health insurance company or could be a large uh, employer, the two aspects where that might be. Yes, thank you. So um, just speaking about that, tell me, because I know we've got, I don't know, about 40 PBMs licensed in our state, um, but the market share is made up a little bit differently in that. Talk just quickly about that piece. There are 41, um, so good guess, that was close, uh, in Oklahoma. And yeah, the most of those are smaller PBMs, but there are three main PBMs in the United States that cover somewhere between 70 and 80 percent of most of the covered lives, so the people who are insured. Yeah. Okay, um, how about some history or background on PBM legislation in Oklahoma? The main legislation came into effect in November 1st, 2019. That was the Patient's Right to Pharmacy Choice Act. Tell us a little bit about what that, um, what the act did. Oh, okay. Um, so the Patient's Right to Pharmacy Choice Act basically put in a whole bunch of provisions um, into our statutes that limited the PBMs in terms of what they could put in their contracts with the pharmacies uh, and things like uh, making sure that they didn't charge transaction fees on certain things, on adjudicated claims. Um, it also added things like uh, network accessing requirements, which is essentially, those are requirements that say, okay, if you live w- within X number of miles, or if you have so many covered lives, then 95% of those lives have to have access to a pharmacy in your network, PBM, um, that they can get to. So. For the people who are in the urban areas, it's not that big a deal, really, because there are lots of pharmacies that we can go to. But for the people that live on the outskirts of Oklahoma, especially, it can be difficult. It might Mm -hmm. might be 17 or 25 miles to the closest pharmacy. Another thing I know that it did, too, was what what in the industry we call any willing provider. In other words, the PBM has to contract with any pharmacy who wants to do business with them, or they have to offer them a contract. So there was that piece. Yes. Um, 
one other thing just to fill in a hole too is mail order it addressed mm -hmm. basically d did away with any any sort of incentives cost uh, reductions or co-pays to do mail order to try to drive business to those uh, independent pharmacies yes and i might just mention because as we're talking about this realizing what what was that um trying to solve or what why is this an issue some people might be thinking and i think part of that problem is as we mentioned earlier there's really just a few very large, we're talking multi-billion dollar companies who are PBMs. Now you're trying to deal with, you know, mom and pop pharmacy in a rural community. It's quite an unlevel playing field. Yes. And so part of this is trying to level that playing field uh, is, is sort of the idea behind part of that. So you made reference earlier, and I kind of cut you off so we could go in a little bit different direction, but now fill in the details of that court case, that PCMA versus What's his name? Right, yeah. right, right. <laughs> that guy. Um, so <laughs> the PCMA versus Mulready case and the Oklahoma Insurance Department uh, was filed October 25th, 2019 in the U.S. Western District Court, U.S. District Court for the Western District of Oklahoma. Um, and essentially what PCMA said was that you, Oklahoma, don't get to uh, enforce your rules against certain types of health insurance plans. PCMA basically is saying that Oklahoma is preempted from enforce, enforcing our statutes because of federal legislation mm -hmm. uh, that essentially takes its place. That really is the crux of the issue, right? Is yeah. whether whether the state has the ability to regulate PBMs yes. that are ERISA plans uh, that are typically handled at the federal level and not at the state level. Exactly. Now there was another court case um, PCMA versus Rutledge, which was an Arkansas case have, having to do similarly with PBMs, the ability of the state to regulate that, and that went all the way up to the U.S. Supreme Court. I can't remember the date of when that uh, came came through, maybe a year ago, uh, maybe January, but at any rate, can you, I, I'm not to put you on the spot, I don't think you were prepared to talk about that, but any thoughts on, on that? And I know there were certainly lots of folks in this conversation and space watching that, just like mm -hmm. there's a lot of folks nationally watching our case to see exactly what is determined there. Basically, that one was about um, Arkansas's, I think it was 600 or 700. Anyway, it was about their the costs mm -hmm. that their statutes addressed uh, and state regulations that don't force a health insurance plan to make specific changes um, are not preempted by federal law. You know, our regulations in Oklahoma really don't, we're not, we're not addressing ERISA plans specifically. You know, these are real pretty basic rules that the, the PBM world needs to live by that protects the consumers and protects, um, you know, the pharmacies to make sure, like you said, we have an even playing field. Have you seen any change within the PBMs in, in sort of attitude or direction or anything? I, I have, actually, and I, and I have to say I'm really thankful for that. I'm glad to see it happening. We received somewhere to the tune of 25,000 complaints, and that um, was from essentially all of the, uh, not all, but a lot of the local pharmacies getting together through their representative and sending in complaints on all kinds of things, transaction fees, um, MAC, which is uh, maximum allowable cost pricing discrepancies. Pharmacies would say, oh, we should have been reimbursed a higher amount, mm -hmm. things like that. The Patients' Right to Pharmacy Choice Act had put into place was the ad advisory committee. There are about 20 cases right now that um, are in various stages of either settlement negotiations or about to go to hearing. So certainly that is a challenge in the enforcement is that as we move forward and are doing that, if, if the court case goes a certain way, there there may be stuff to unwind. Yes, yes. That can be extremely difficult. In terms of have we seen changes from the yeah. PBMs? Um, and in that regard, absolutely. We have. Once, I think, honestly, it had a lot to do with them realizing that, hey, OID is going to get on We're board serious. and start <laughs> doing something. They're paying attention to us. Um, and we have been. Um, it's, <laughs> you know, when you're wading through 25,000 alleged violations at the beginning of the year. That's a little difficult. Um, and that was just what we received through June of this year. Since then, we've received around 90,000 more. So, um, and we have been able, since March, we've been able to close around 
a little over 20,000. We don't represent the pharmacies. We represent the state of Oklahoma mm -hmm. and the insurance department. Aside from the numbers and mm -hmm. just having to get through all those thousands upon thousands of, uh, uh, of alleged violations and investigate those, mm -hmm. any other specific enforcement challenges outside of just sheer numbers? Well, um, because of the changes in legislation, it's been it's taken a little bit to get the Pharmacy Choice Commission in place. In fact, we're still waiting from, for an appointment from the Attorney General's office, which hopefully will be soon. PBMs are responding to you? Drugstores or the pharmacies are responding to you? Yeah, so actually, surprisingly, um, once they realized that we were actually going to start doing stuff, they started getting out ahead of things talking to the individual pharmacies, talking to their representatives. Um, and they're honestly really great people to work with. They will respond to my calls. We have good discussions. Not everything in the, in the law is as clear as we would like it to be, um, I think, for both sides. And you've got a team. Um, uh, we got, what, four people? How many people helping you doing investigations? And um, Currently, yes, um, myself, and we've got two investigators, and then what, somebody who's a temporary lead investigator from our anti-fraud unit. One final thing is, um, as far as our legislation, I mean, our statute that's in place versus, I know that when, when we passed the, the PBM legislation maybe six years ago or so, we were one of the first in the country to require them to kind of be licensed and to put them under the insurance department. Now I know, I don't know, more than 40 states have put them under the insurance department. Some have different variations. Uh, any thoughts on, on our statutes versus others and, and what's happening out there? Um, I think that, honestly, Oklahoma is really on the cutting edge of this particular issue. Yes, a lot of states have legislation in place, but at least from what I've been able to gather, not a whole lot of the states have really moved forward in terms of enforcement. Yeah. Uh, yeah I mean, we did hear about Arkansas's experience, of course. Yes, but. yes, we did about Arkansas. And like I said, there are some uh, other cases that are in other states that are currently pending. Um, similarly to the PCMA case um, here in the Western District. so Yeah, and it does put you in a tough spot uh, or makes it tough for your team because we are, as far as I know and everyone talked to, we're the only state in the country who is enforcing PBM statutes on uh, Medicare Part D programs and on ERISA programs uh, to the extent that we are. We have a very, very strong statute that's been put in place. Yeah, yeah, but I do think that uh, we'll be successful in court on it and um but Stay we'll tuned. know really shortly. Okay. Yeah, in the meantime, I would just like to say that um, we've facilitated over $39,000 worth of monies going back to pharmacies. Mm -hmm. Kelly, thank you for being with us. Thank you for what you're doing at Oklahoma Insurance Department and on behalf of the pharmacies out here in, in Oklahoma. And uh, thank you all for joining us for the uh, Mulready Minute podcast on PBMs. Stay tuned on that court case. That'll be a big decision coming up, and we'll look forward to seeing you next time. If you found this episode informative, please subscribe and share with your colleagues. Visit oid.ok.gov slash podcast. Let us know what topics you would like to hear about on this podcast. Until next time, take care from the Oklahoma Insurance Department.